Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to show you what an inverse of a matrix is, what it means, what the definition is, and then later on, we'll show you some various techniques on how to calculate the inverse of a matrix. But first, let's talk about the definition of the inverse of a matrix. Let's say we have a matrix A. If that's the case, we may have an inverse. Not all matrices have an inverse, by the way, but if there is such a thing as an inverse of a matrix, we write it like this. This is A to the minus one means the inverse of the matrix A. Then if that's the inverse of the matrix A, then we can take the original matrix, multiply times its inverse, or in the reverse order, we can multiply the inverse of the matrix A times the original matrix, and we should get back the identity matrix. So the order of operation doesn't matter. Therefore, it has the commutative property. Now, if that's true, we can then say, let's say we have a matrix A right here, which has elements 2, 1, 5, and 3. And then let's imagine that that matrix has an inverse. And therefore, we write it like this, A inverse. And since we don't know what the elements are, the inverse matrix are, we can write them as A, B, C, and D. And they're, at this point, unknown. But since the rule tells us that we can multiply the matrix A times the inverse and get back the identity matrix, from that information, we should be able to figure out what A, B, C, and D are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply these two matrices and set them equal to the elements of the identity matrix. So first of all, I can say that 2 times A plus 1 times C must equal 1. So 2A plus 1 times C equals 1. So I multiply this row times this column, and I get that element. Now I multiply this row times this column, and I should get this element. So therefore, 2B plus 1D should equal 0. So 2 times b and 1 times d equal 0. Now I multiply this row times this column, and I get 5a plus 3c is equal to 0. So this multiplied times this gives me 0. And finally, this row multiplied times this column gives me 1. So that means that 5b plus 3d is equal to 1. So now we have four equations and four unknowns which we should be able to solve for a, b, c, and d. Now, it's not really as bad as you think, because two of the equations are set equal to zero, which means in this case, we can write that d is equal to minus 2b. When we move the 2b across, it becomes minus 2b. So now we have d and b related to one another. And here we can write that uh, 3c is equal to minus 5a, or c is equal to minus 5 over 3a. So now we have a relationship between a and c, and a relationship between b and d. We can now plug those two relationships in, relationship in the other two equations to solve for the variables. So we can take this and plug it into here, and we can take this and plug it into here. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. So here we end up with 2a plus 1 times c instead of c. I can write minus 5 over 3a is equal to 1. So now I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 3. So go ahead, multiply both sides of the equation by 3, and we get 6a minus the 3 cancel out, that would be 5a, equals 3 times 1, which is 3. So therefore, we have a equals 3. So now we know one of our, three, uh, one of our four unknowns. On the other side, I can write 5b plus 3 times, instead of d, I can write minus 2b is equal to 1. So 5b minus 6b is equal to 1, minus b is equal to 1, or b is equal to negative 1. So now I have the second of the four unknowns. I can now use those two in the other two equations to solve for the other two. So here we can say that d is equal to minus 2 times b, and since b is negative 1, we can say that d is equal to 2. And finally, here we can write that c is equal to minus 5 over 3a. And since a is equal to 3, that means that c is equal to negative 5. So a equals 3, d equals 2, c equals negative 5, b equals negative 1, which means now I have the elements of my inverse matrix. So a to the negative 1, which is the inverse of a, is equal to a, which is equal to 3, b, which is equal to negative 1, c, which is equal to negative 5, and d, which is equal to 2. And there's the inverse of my matrix A. Now, to make sure I did not make any mistakes, I should be able to multiply A times A inverse, or A inverse times A, and get back the identity matrix. So let's see if that works. So I'm going to multiply the matrix A. So A multiplied times A inverse should give me back the identity matrix. So 2, 1, 
5 and 3 is the A matrix. The identity matrix is 3, negative 1, negative 5, and 2. And let's see what we get. So it's 2 times 3, that's 6. Added to that, 1 times the negative 5, that's a minus 5. So that's my first element. So now I multiply this row times this column. I get 2 times the negative 1, which is a negative 2. Added to that, 1 times 2, which is a positive 2. All right, coming down here, I multiply this row times this column, so I get 15 and minus 15. And finally, I multiply this row times this column, so I get a minus 5 and a plus 6. And let's see what that reduces to. So 6 minus 5 is a 1, minus 2 plus 2 is a 0, 15 minus 15 is a 0, and minus 5 plus 6 is a 1, and that's indeed the identity matrix, which means that this indeed is the correct inverse of the matrix A. So that's what we mean by the inverse of an matrix. It's another matrix, such that when we multiply the inverse times the original matrix, we get the identity back. You may say, who really cares about inverse matrix? Well, it turns out that the inverse of a matrix has some powerful uses, and we'll show you that in some videos that are to come. But first, we're going to concentrate on some better methods to find the inverse of a matrix. Not that this is a bad method, it may not be the most convenient method. So there's some other very clever methods of how to find the inverse of a matrix. So for the next several videos, I will show you some of those methods on how to find the inverse of a matrix. And then you'll see how we can use that inverse of a matrix to solve other kinds of problems. So stay tuned if you're interested in the inverse of a matrix and how to use it.